Philip Banks has a weekly audience of 300 million people across the USA from the bedroom of his cottage in Northeast Scotland. His is the gravelly, crisp voice of trailers promoting forthcoming programs on America's CNBC News Channel. His dulcet tones are global friendly, so it doesn't matter that he has a British accent. They have a regular weekend show which they like to be promoted during their regular weekday output, so I have to get out of bed at 3 a.m. on Friday to record the trailer to attract an audience for Saturday morning, he said. From a soundproof booth in his home, in the windswept village of Port Gordon near Bukey, he lends his voice to an assortment of global film corporations and TV production companies who headhunt his powerful tones to advertise their product. Big names of his past and present clients include cable network CNN, Sky, the BBC, and even the Star Wars Rogue One trailer for Disney. No one can believe that I do what I do, said 58-year-old Philip. He moved from Somerset up to the Northeast 16 years ago to be closer to his wife's relatives, but after they went their separate ways he decided to stay on. Luckily in my job you don't need to be anywhere specific so here is as good a place as any until I get a better idea, he said. Me, my border collie Bess and a tumble-down cottage by the sea, life's pretty good. But Philip's career wasn't always so unconventional. As a young man he studied law and economics at Oxford, before working in insurance and investment management. It was a merely a chance encounter in a radio studio that set his brain worrying about the possibilities of a life outside the office 9 to 5. My company at the time wanted to organize some radio sponsorship, so I went along to sort things out, he said. I was introduced to a BBC presenter, and we sat in the studio together. While we were waiting, she indulged my curiosity and showed me what all the buttons were for, playing different commercials and voice clips for various bits and pieces. I was intrigued. Who were these people that lent their voices to all sorts of random products I had a bit of a mad idea, and on my next day off I phoned up a guy I knew who owned a recording studio. He usually did demos for hip bands, but the two of us spent a whole afternoon larking around like schoolboys trying to get my voice to sound vaguely professional. In the end I walked away with a two-minute reel of me doing different voices and character work. Then, I phoned up the world and his wife. It wasn't an easy first two years for Philip, who saw voicing jobs arrive only sporadically despite the effort he was putting in to secure them. He began to look at it as a small side project. When I wanted to buy something, I'd take a job, he said simply. At age 32, Philip was still working in insurance full-time, but things changed when he was made redundant. I was going for interview after interview, but nothing was coming through, he said. I had no delusions of grandeur about the type of job I wanted, I just wanted to pay the bills. That was when I started to focus on voiceover work, more for survival than anything else. Anytime the phone rang with a job I said yes. At one point I was even in casualty playing a TV reporter. It was bizarre being surrounded by professional actors, but I needed to pay my mortgage. My first TV promo was for BBC Two. It's a bit like getting a badge of honor having the BBC on your CV leads to more big things. But the life of a voice actor isn't as glamorous as it may seem. Although Philip does travel to exotic locations on occasion, the vast bulk of his work is done in his second bedroom. It's crammed with technology, he said. 
the term home studio implies some degree of amateurism, but my stuff here needs to be as good as the tech studios in central London or law. If it's not, it will be immediately obvious and any recordings are completely unusable for professional firms looking for high-quality surround sound. Philip's recording sessions last anywhere from 5 minutes to 5 hours, as he reads scripts to producers who record him from thousands of miles away. As the promotional voice for CNBC and states, logistics and in particular, time zones can be an issue. Philip will often find himself working in the middle of the night to fit around the recording schedules of his North American clients. This is due to the fact most firms prefer to connect Liv to Philip's cottage in Moray to record, rather than have him produce the clips without their guidance. He works most days, churning out more than 900 sessions a year. But despite the hard work, expense and at times unpredictability of the business, Philip can't see himself doing anything else. I love the invisibility of it, he said. Audience figures for Coronation Street are about 8 million, and the cast are considered to be famous. My weekly audience is 300 million, yet no one knows who I am, 